Welcome back to The Hook on Woodward Sports Network. Tom Azaway alongside Pilar Lastra and the four-time Stanley Cup champion Darren McCarty in his Tiger jersey today because he's going to, the ball to watch game. the Tigers whip up on the Orioles. But the big story of the day, of course, the happiest place to be as a sports fan today is Detroit, yes. Michigan, USA, because the Pistons have the number one pick in the NBA draft for the first time since 1970. That's right, they took the dauber. Bob Lanier out of St. Bonaventure back in 1970. For more on the draft, the man will be covering it. One of my favorites. I stay in the car just to listen to this guy do the I game. I do too, bro. Mark Kestisher. Kesty joins us from Brooklyn, USA. What's up, Kesty? Very, very kind of you guys uh, to mention that. And I just hope, as a guy who lives in Connecticut and looks for direct flights, <laughs> that Delta flight to Detroit, if we can get the Pistons back on the national schedule, I'm all oh. about that. I can't wait, man. It's been a long time, Kesty. 2004 was a hell of a team. They had a great run, all those Eastern Conference finals. But it's about time we see that piston red, white, and blue back out in front. No, I agree with you. That was actually my first finals that I covered was that 2004. Uh, me and, uh, well, I was much younger then, still didn't have hair, but Tim Legler <laughs> was my uh, analyst. Nice. And I think it was Brent Musburger and Ooh. Dr. Jack Ramsey. That oh. was uh, one heck of a way to break in for me. Dr. Jack, did you take any of his uh, suit jackets, any of his leisure suits? <laughs> <laughs> I, have a, I still have a pin. Uh, it's a Dr. Jack 77 pin oh. uh, that the Portland Trailblazers put out uh, after his awesome. passing. And it has that great 70s kind of uh, sport coat look, little design. Uh, great man. And you know what my fondest memory, I'm getting you way off track here, no, working not. with Brent. Um, I said, let's go to a Tigers game. It was an off day in the finals, and I forget who it was, but somebody had tickets for us. We had to go to a radio station to get them, and one of the caveats was, will Brent talk Michigan football for a few <laughs> minutes? And Brent said, not the first time I sang for my supper. So he went in there, <laughs> he got the tickets. Then he wanted to go into the press box, and I'm like, well, we don't have a credential. He goes, ah, just follow me. Uh, he looks it. in. The gentleman at the press box did not want to let us in because we didn't have credentials. I know and who it Dave is. Dave Dombrowski. That's Jerry. Dave Dombrowski. <laughs> then, yeah, you're right. And he was doing his job. And Dave yep. Dombrowski, uh, then uh, president and GM, sees Brent out of the corner of his eye. Next thing I know, we're in the president's suite uh, oh. watching oh, the game. Oh, man. So it, was, uh, it was a lot of fun. Great memories. That's awesome. Mark Kestisher, ESPN Radio, mm -hmm. covering the NBA draft tonight. Got a pretty good crowd with you tonight. P.J. Carlissimo, Seth Greenberg, Ramona Shelburne. The festivities start at 7 from the Barclays Center. What can you tell us about this great, great player that the Pistons are going to get in Cade Cunningham? Yeah, I, I, I did uh, one of his late season games. It was an overtime game. I think it was against Oklahoma. I'm forgetting already. And then a couple of his uh, Big 12 uh, tournament games, uh, the win over Baylor, and then uh, they lost uh, heading in toward the Big 12 championship game. But he's, look, he's a guy that is prototypical NBA, right? He's got the size. He's 6'8". He's multi-positional. He can be a point guard at that size, which is a huge advantage. He can score inside, mid-range, three-point line. Um, he's just a guy that everyone has seen on the radar for the last couple of years. And look, we only get to see these guys for one year at the college level. Right. Uh, you know, he, he's, he's shown enough, obviously, to the Pistons in what's a very good top five or six that he's the guy. And, you know, we saw last year number three turned out to be the rookie of the year. I mean, it's right. it's a little bit of a crapshoot, but it feels a little less than that uh, with Cade uh, Cunningham and certainly with a needed point guard in Detroit. We're talking to Mark Kestesher, ESPN NBA radio play-by-play -play announcer. And my question to you, obviously with the young talent that Dwayne Casey and Troy Weaver have assimilated here in Detroit with the Sadiq Bays, the Jeremy Grants, um, now that Kate Cunningham comes in there, as Pistons fans, what is expectations for us? Should we expect that this team should be able to make it into the playoffs in the East? That's a great question. I mean, they did a great job last year with two trades in the first round. Bay, you mentioned, Isaiah Stewart also coming over. Uh, we didn't really get to see, you know, the full Killian Hayes experience. You mentioned Jeremy Grant, huge pick. And then you had a guy like Cade Cunningham. I kind of think of it in my mind this year, a, a recent example would be the Atlanta Hawks, where they keep adding talent every year being in the lottery. And then you wondered, when would they make 
that move. And it didn't come right away. So in the Eastern Conference, maybe it's a little easier to sneak in. Now we have the play-in tournament, so you're talking nine and ten seed as well. That kind of throws a couple extra spots in there to maybe get toward the postseason. I think you have to keep expectations at a decent level. And look what Atlanta did this year. They took that huge leap. Phoenix Suns obviously added Chris Paul, and that was tremendous. But they had a lot of young talent. That's in their third year this year and then made this incredible run to the NBA Finals. So I don't want to you know, get folks too excited and say it's a guaranteed playoffs this year, but they're going to compete. Uh, you've got the 9 and 10 at play, and then again, let it marinate a little bit. Uh, maybe you, know, you attract a, a, a veteran as well who could be the missing piece, and then you're right back uh, in the hunt in the postseason. Well, I think you made a great point there for us fans, and you said Atlanta is a comparable, and for me, that's a team you don't want to play against. So if they establish that work ethic and things like that. So who does Mark Kestesher, if Kay Cunningham uh, was announced going number one, who do, who goes number two? Is there a sure, it's, sure cut two? Yeah, I, I feel it's going to be Jalen Green. I did a couple of G League games this year. Uh, he's a guy who skipped college. Uh, I'm sure you all are familiar with G League Ignite, which, yep. you know, they didn't get the full experience this year because of the pandemic and playing in a bubble situation at Disney for about 15 or 16 games. But these are guys that got paid. Uh, Jalen Green got the maximum, I believe, about a half million dollars, uh, you know, to go right from high school into this pro situation, play with veterans, play against veterans be coached by Brian Shaw, who has NBA experience and obviously uh, played as well at a high level. So I, I think it's, you know, it's just about a lock that he would go to the Houston Rockets at number two. But, you know, it was funny, we brought up PJ and he was in Seattle when Greg Oden went number one to Portland. I don't think it's the same situation, but sometimes it's, it's better to be the number two, you know, if you're in Houston's position and say, well, maybe the, the team at one messes it up. Remember, Boston <laughs> traded out to the number three spot and ended up, you know, with a, a really good pick a couple of years ago when Markel Fultz went number one oh. uh, to uh, Philadelphia. So sometimes being in that position takes I one away and that. forces you to make another pick. But yeah, Jalen Green, I think, is just about a virtual lock to go number two. There's no Sam Bowie versus Michael Jordan this year. I mean, <laughs> are we safe to say that at least? I I think so. You know, it's interesting if you're in Toronto. And, uh, and that's, you know, pretty close to you guys. And you're sitting at number four, and Kyle Lowry's career is almost over. Like, I think they're in a great spot to pick up uh, the kid from Gonzaga, Jalen Suggs, oh, yeah. who I think is a terrific player. and is gonna, I think he's going to be a great pro. And that's why I'm so excited about the top of this draft, because, you know, Jalen Suggs might be a number one pick, you know, in many other drafts. So, no doubt. Uh, you know, here they are with Toronto with a chance to, you know, kind of – after a step back year this year for so many different reasons, whether it was injury or COVID or the fact they played, they didn't play in Canada at all. They played in Tampa Bay for their home games. And now they may end up with, um, you may call him the second best point guard in the draft, you know, after Kate Cunningham. Mark, we're hearing a lot of, I, I'd say rumors from the media saying that, oh, the Pistons are possibly looking to trade out of the number one pick. We did see Troy Weaver speak and say, hey, these are just, you know, stop believing everything you read. But yet he never really confirmed that, yes, we are going to take Cade Cunningham. Why do you think that the media is trying to put so much drama into this? <laughs> oh, we just love drama, don't we? <laughs> uh, from a media and societal perspective, I think, um, you know, I saw Woj in the lobby a couple hours ago, and I think he's got seven phones attached to him. And I, I joked with him, I brought an extra uh, iPad this year. I'm calling the Woj Pad. It's going to be dedicated <laughs> to his Twitter feed yeah. because he has all the information uh, that, that needs to be known. And he's already, at last check, and I haven't been on the Internet in about five minutes, uh, you know, at least on Twitter. That's all it takes. I think he, that's it, five minutes. I could yeah. have missed five tweets already. Easy. I think he's already pretty much tweeted out uh, Detroit, yeah. Houston, and Cleveland in their top three picks. So <laughs> if I'm the Pistons, I don't even give it up either. Why not have some intrigue? Why not listen to some more offers? Especially if teams feel they can get a good player, you know, a few picks back, maybe get a little bit more of a haul. So, um, it, 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 but if you go by what Woj is saying, uh, Kate Cunningham, barring that great uh, last-minute offer, uh, should go number one to Detroit. 
Mark Kesticher joins us, ESPN Radio. I'll have the draft tonight. Make sure you tune in. Uh, starting at 7 o'clock tonight. I wanted to ask you about uh, Giannis and uh, the Bucks. What a great story they were. And I, I just, you know, fall in love with a player. That's that's my guy, man. I mean, I'm not a LeBron guy. I don't like what he does. I don't like – I call him a carpetbagger. Nonetheless, that's just my opinion. Uh, I love that what Giannis did. What's your take on that Bucks team? And is there another Bucks team out there? Yeah, that's a good question. I think um, – how can you not love Giannis for many yeah. reasons? I remember being here at the draft – uh, eight years ago when I, I have this list right here I could share with you all. It's about four pages long. And it's all <laughs> the pronunciations of guys that may get selected tonight. And when I looked at Giannis's last name eight years ago and again today, it hasn't gotten any better. Um, it's, <laughs> it's a tough one to pronounce. You got to go slow. There's like five different accepted pronunciations. And so um, it was you know nice to see a guy that we had no idea eight years ago selected 15 could develop into the player he became. And then, to your point, after two MVPs and talk of a team that just couldn't get over the top, and then the guy's knee bends away, it should never bend, and nine days later he's he's playing in the finals. I mean, how can you not? And then everything he did, 50 points to close, and his press conference afterward, and even before that, talking about, you know, life in general, you just can't but uh, help but root for a team, especially if you live in a medium-sized market, it's a, it's a great story. Is there another one around there? I think Phoenix could easily have been, you know, the NBA champs as well. Utah is another team that, you know, for whatever reasons, uh, just didn't work against the Clippers. You know, credit to L.A. Utah had some failures down the stretch. That's another team that could easily have won a championship this year. So that's like three smaller market size where, you know, there's really good stories, uh, really good players, guys that were taken later in draft. Uh, I think Donovan Mitchell might have been a, a 15 pick or a 16 pick. We know so we passed it's not on him. Always, yeah, <laughs> everybody did. The Knicks, the Knicks passed on him, and he lived in New York and worked out in their facility. Sickening. I mean, it's, you know, it's crazy. I'm a lifelong Knicks fan. Grew up, from, grew up in New Jersey. So I was 11 when yeah. they won the championship. Look at me now. I mean, uh, if that doesn't tell you the Knicks story, I don't know what does. We want to be the next Milwaukee Bucks here yes. in Detroit. How long before, and I know Mac asked you earlier, but – Really, what's your take on the Pistons going forward before we let you go? Yeah, I think, look, you know, you have to figure it's at least a couple of years, you know, to just get the young talent going. It is going to take, I think, somewhere along the line, an acquisition of a veteran-type player, somebody to lead the way. Or, you know, look, if Cade Cunningham's the real deal, and two, three years from now, you know, he's in MVP conversation for whatever reason, there's your guy. So... You know, it's it's a process. I hate to use that word because I think the Sixers might have marketed it, and I might have to huh. put fifteen dollars. Those poor guys. For saying it, but <laughs> yeah, but you know what? It's a great ride too. Who wouldn't want to be the Milwaukee Bucks in the last three years? I know it was heartache two years ago, blowing a two old lead in the conference finals. But when you could say you're in contention, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. not just fighting for an eight seed. We saw Pistons teams be an eight seed right. a few years ago, and we don't you know, want they that. go up against Cleveland. You don't want that. No. So. You know, you get to a, you get to that mid spot, that four or five, and then eventually, if you've got a team, um, you know, that can really compete, you know, then you just throw you throw your hat in there and look. These are best of seven series. You never know when there's going to be injuries on either side, and next thing you know, you're like Milwaukee, where you're one Kevin Durant size eighteen yep. away from getting knocked out in the second round. Next thing you know, you're having a parade. Hey, I lied. You got me on Philly. Where's Ben Simmons going tonight? <laughs> That's a good question. Two things to watch, I would think, would be Simmons. That's a complicated one because uh, of the, the length of his contract that's left, and everyone feels they could probably fix him because he's still a walking triple-double despite yep. all the issues that he's had. Um, and he the other shoot. is, you know, yeah, 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 I mean, he passed up a dunk right at the rim against Phil, against uh, Atlanta. That and, I th- and the Lakers are going to buy, I don't know if they're going to buy him, but they're going to trade they're going to trade for a veteran that's going to help that team, whether it's Buddy Heald from Sacramento or DeMar DeRozan from San Antonio. You know, that's the other part of tonight. We got a lot of, you know, great young talent picks. But last year we had 16 trades and 55 Ooh. players that moved. Some wow. of them multiple moves. Yeah. That was a hell of a draft last year. That was a fun draft last year. 
Except that was the that night was, that we found we were, out we found out Clay Thompson blew out his ACL well, that night, which which sucked. Right, that's how it all started. And yep. last year we did a virtual draft from Bristol, and all of my broadcast partners were somewhere else. I was by myself. Yeah. Uh, PJ was in Seattle, and Doris Burke was, I think, in Philly, and uh, Lafonso Ellis was, you know, in South Bend, Indiana. Tonight we'll all be together. Great. Uh, you mentioned Seth. Uh, you mentioned PJ, Ramona Shelburne, who's done a lot of sidelines for us during the uh, All-Star Game and Finals. She's got her uh, kind of the, her ear to the Internet, if you will, with a lot of trade stuff. So uh, so we should have a good time here in Brooklyn. It's good to be all together tonight. I'll be at the Tiger game with Mac, and I'll have you in my ear on the radio, ESPN <laughs> Radios. Mark Kestisher joining us from Brooklyn. Have a great broadcast tonight, Thanks a lot, Mark. Mark. And Thanks make sure so you much. thank Al Rosenberg for that. us. Good, 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 to, good to see all you guys. Al's the best. He'll He's be the best. Sound good. good luck. Good luck to you, Tigers. My Yankees are getting clocked right now in Tampa. I know. Yeah, but you so, got hey, Garrett Cole. Nice job. You got Gallo coming. Don't worry. Yeah. I, you, I'm waiting to blow you, Maz's you, head off right now when uh, <laughs> when, uh, when Rizzo the Red Sox get, get Rizzo. When Rizzo goes uh, to the Red Sox. So, uh, I, yeah. I'm going to a uh, Billy Joel concert next Wednesday at Boston. Sweet. That's the only way you can get me to Fenway Park. <laughs> there you go, brother. Right. There you go. Wait for him at the Garden once a month. You know that. Yes, that's right. The Garden is a special place for him. Good to be with you all. Thanks, Thanks Mark. Mark. All right, Mark. Thanks so much for Have swinging a great by. Make sure that you are following you. Mark on his social media. It's at Mark Kestisher. Um, great What a dude. Stuff. All you oh, New so Yorkers are the same. Hey, man. Start a new career in an industry that is always essential. The heat and the cooling. To learn more today, go to northwesterntech.edu.